More than 42,000 people are now confirmed to have been killed in earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. A series of strong earthquakes hit Turkey and Syria on February 6, 2023, causing widespread damage and significant loss of life. According to official reports, the death toll has surpassed 50,000, with more than 36,000 people killed in the initial magnitudes 7.8 earthquake. The earthquake was one of the deadliest this decade, with seismologists attributing the high death toll to the region's history of big quakes, as well as inadequate building standards and emergency response capabilities. Many people have been injured in the earthquakes, and rescue and recovery efforts are ongoing. The earthquake has also sparked discussions on the need for better emergency preparedness and building standards in the region. Among the harrowing signs that we are to witness is the Earth's contractions, which involve the ground shaking and trembling, and a significant rise in natural disasters as we draw closer to the end times. In the book of Matthew, Jesus himself spoke about the signs that will indicate his return, stating that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Matthew 24 verse 7. These words can be terrifying to us, as we see the world around us already plagued by such tragedies, and the thought of them becoming even more frequent and severe is indeed shocking. It is clear that these prophecies are meant to make us aware of the seriousness of the times that we are living in. They are a reminder that we must be prepared for what is to come, both spiritually and physically. We must turn to God in these times of turmoil and seek His guidance and protection for he alone can provide us with the strength and fortitude to endure the hardships that lie ahead. In recent years, we have witnessed a significant increase in natural disasters, including earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, and wildfires, among others. The frequency and intensity of these events have left many people wondering whether these are the signs of the biblical end times that have been prophesied for centuries. The Bible tells us that the end times will be marked by various natural disasters, including earthquakes. Jesus himself foretold this when he said, There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Luke 21 verse 11. The prophet Isaiah also spoke about the earth's destruction, saying that the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, is a 24 verse 20. As we look at the world around us today, we see many of these biblical prophecies coming to fruition. The number of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions has increased significantly in recent years, with some of the most devastating ones occurring in countries like Japan, Haiti, and Nepal. Hurricanes and floods have also become more frequent and intense, causing widespread destruction and loss of life. These natural disasters are terrifying to many people, but they are also a warning. They remind us that we are living in a fallen world that is marred by sin and corruption. The Bible tells us that the earth is groaning under the weight of sin, and the signs we are seeing are proof that this is indeed the case. But these signs are also an opportunity for us to turn back to God. They are a reminder that our time on earth is short, and that we need to be prepared for what is to come. We need to turn away from our sin and seek God's forgiveness and grace, for only through him can we find true peace and security in the midst of the storm. For centuries, Christians have been anticipating the return of Jesus Christ, an event that has been foretold in the Bible. While no one knows the exact date of his return, there are numerous biblical prophecies that describe what will happen when he comes back. One of the most significant signs of Christ's Return is the widespread apostasy, or falling away from the faith. As a believer in the gospel, I cannot help but notice the increasing trend of people turning away from their faith and abandoning the truth of the Bible. The Apostle Paul wrote about this phenomenon in his second letter to the Thessalonians. He warned that in the end times, there would be a great falling away from the faith before the return of Jesus Christ. He wrote, let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. 
This prophecy is particularly relevant to our time as we see the world increasingly turning away from God and his teachings. The secularization of society has led to a loss of moral compass and many people have embraced a worldview that is at odds with the teachings of the Bible. One of the most significant contributing factors to this apostasy is the growing popularity of false teachings and doctrines. The Bible warns us that in the end times, false prophets will arise, leading many astray with their deceptive teachings. Jesus himself warned us about this, saying, For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Matthew 24 verse 24 We must be vigilant and discerning in our faith, testing everything against the truth of the Bible. We must also be prepared for the coming of Christ and live our lives in a way that is pleasing to God, always mindful of the fact that we do not know when he will return. In addition to the apostasy, there will also be many natural disasters and signs in the heavens. Jesus said in Luke 21 verse 25-26, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea, and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Another significant sign of Christ's return is the restoration of the nation of Israel. The restoration of the nation of Israel is a miraculous event that was prophesied in the Bible and fulfilled in our lifetime. After nearly 2,000 years of exile and persecution, the Jewish people returned to their ancestral homeland in 1948 to establish the modern state of Israel. This event was not only significant in terms of world history, but it was also a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. The Old Testament prophets spoke of a time when God would bring the Jewish people back to their land and restore them as a nation. Isaiah 11 verse 11 Dash 12 says, In that day the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant that remains of his people. He will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the banished of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Ezekiel also prophesied the restoration of Israel, saying, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone and will gather them from all around and bring them to their own land. Ezekiel 37 verse 21. These prophecies were fulfilled in 1948 when the Jewish people returned to their homeland and established the state of Israel. The restoration of Israel is not only a fulfillment of prophecy, but also a testament to God's faithfulness. He promised to restore the Jewish people, and he kept his promise. It is also a reminder that God is still at work in the world today and that he is in control of history. The restoration of Israel has also had significant geopolitical implications. It has been a source of conflict in the Middle East for decades, as neighboring countries have tried to destroy Israel and take control of the land. However, the fact that Israel has been able to defend itself and thrive as a nation is a testament to its resilience and determination. The Old Testament prophets, including Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Zechariah, all spoke of a time when Israel would be restored as a nation. This was fulfilled in 1948, when Israel became a recognized state once again. When Christ returns, there will be a final judgment of all people. Jesus will separate the righteous from the wicked, as described in Matthew 25, verse 31-33. The righteous will enter into eternal life with Christ, while the wicked will be cast into the lake of fire. The return of Christ is an event that Christians should look forward to with great anticipation. It will be a time of great rejoicing for those who have put their faith in him, and a time of judgment for those who have rejected him. While we do not know the exact time of his return, we should live each day with the knowledge that it could happen at any moment. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ will return one day to establish his kingdom on earth. This event is known as the Second Coming, and it is a central aspect of Christian belief. As believers, 
we should be praying for the Lord's return and eagerly awaiting the fulfillment of this promise. The message of Maranatha, which means come, Lord Jesus, is a call to believers to long for Christ's return and to prepare ourselves for his coming. This message is rooted in the words of Paul, who wrote in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 22, If anyone does not love the Lord, let him be accursed. Our Lord, come. There are numerous biblical verses that speak about the second coming and urge us to be prepared and to pray for this event. In Matthew 24, Jesus himself spoke about the signs of his return and encouraged his followers to be vigilant and watchful, saying, Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Matthew 24 verse 42 In Revelation, John wrote about the coming of Christ and the establishment of his kingdom, saying, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Revelation 22 verse 20 so, why should we be praying for the Lord's return? There are several reasons. Firstly, it is a sign of our faith and trust in God's promises. We believe that he will keep his word and that Christ will return one day. Our prayers demonstrate our longing for this event and our faith in his promises. Secondly, the second coming of Christ will bring about the fulfillment of God's plan for the world. It will be a time of great joy and celebration for believers as we will be reunited with Christ and live in his kingdom. It will also be a time of judgment for those who have rejected him, but it is our hope that many will turn to him in repentance before it is too late. Finally, our prayers for the Lord's return are a reminder that our time on earth is short and that we should be living our lives in a way that is pleasing to God. It is a call to be vigilant and watchful, to live in a way that honors him and to be ready for his coming. In conclusion, the Maranatha message and the biblical verses about the second coming of Jesus remind us of the hope that we have as believers. We should be praying for the Lord's return and eagerly awaiting the fulfillment of his promises. Our prayers demonstrate our faith in God's plan for the world and our longing for his return. May we be found faithful and prepared when he comes back.